Yes, remediation. Um, an RFID blocking wallet seems to be a very good route to go um, for cloning badges. And then just not leaving the badge lying around anywhere where it might get stolen or taken by somebody for a few minutes. Because as you can see, this only took a couple minutes to duplicate and wasn't a very hard thing to do at all. Um, now, moving on, there are man in the middle attack vectors also with RFID. So, looking at the RFID access reader, there's typically a little screw at the bottom, and you can just unscrew that and lift the panel off. You have access to all these wires in the back. And with that access, you could put a EAP RFID tool or an ESP key um, and connect it to the wires in the back and then just put it back on, leave it there and uh, go back to your house, wherever. And this, these tools will capture unencrypted log data from the reader and send it up to a local host that's either hosted on your phone, computer, or elsewhere. Um, I haven't really gotten a chance to play around with it at all, so forgive me for not having the um, practical knowledge with it right now. This is all theoretical. Um, and I've seen videos of it working, and it seems really cool, and James, James Bondish, so I would love to get it to work, but I'm having issues with it right now. Um, but yes, just as simple as removing the panel and then threading those wires, as you can see in the top right. The top right is the ESP key, and the bottom left, or bottom right is the RFID tool. And with the ESP key, you can just the wires, punch the wires down into those uh, areas, and then it'll capture that data, log it, and then you can send a replay attack. So instead of actually needing a badge, you can just replay, and it'll open the RFID lock. Um, and the reason this is possible is because of the unencrypted traffic that is sent um, through the wire, uh, <clears throat> and it's no point now. <laughs> uh, and with this, also, it doesn't just have to be a re attack. Um, it can also give the attacker a glimpse into what um, what life is like in the building. You can see how many people are going inside, leaving. Is there anybody working overnight, like a night guard, and things like that, which could be very useful for the attacker. Um, just probably don't want to just be walking in the building when it's prime time, and there's 50-something employees. You could just go in when there's one night guard and figure out like how long it takes him to get back to that one reader. So you have a timer, and you can stay away from him, get what you need done, and still um, go unscathed. Uh, just make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, also, the ESP RFID tool that's in the bottom right corner, there's also a um, brute forcing method that it can do. Um, and it'll just go through and brute force the pin code instead of the RFID reader if there's a pin code as well. For remediation for this, you can set up a tampering alarm on the RFID reader. Um, this will go off if there's, if the panel is removed and um, I believe it's done with a magnet. There's um, a magnet inside of the panel and on the actual panel frame and once it's removed and there's no magnetic connection there it'll light up or send an actual alarm to somebody unfortunately this can also be bypassed with a strong magnet if you take off the panel and remove it real carefully with the magnet next to it kind of Indiana Jones but it'll still um show that there hasn't been any, any tampering. And then you can also have a camera pointing at the reader just to um, make sure that nobody is tampering with it and 
on their knees <laughs> trying to take apart the panel and put something behind it just using the RFID reader the way it's supposed to be used and if you do go on there just make sure you look like maintenance yes you just wear a bright colored red or orange jacket and have a clipboard and you nobody will ask questions which brings us to our next topic social engineering um a social engineer could come inside and pose as a guest that's visiting the company and be given a guest badge because that seems to be a uh, prevalent thing that a lot of companies do. If they don't have somebody walking around with them the whole time, they can just give them a guest badge, they have access for the entire day, and then when they leave, they're supposed to give the badge back. But if the company doesn't do anything to make sure they're tur- the guests are turning in the badges, then there's nothing really keeping the guests from taking a badge home with them. And this happens on several occasions. They'll take the badge home, they can clone it, give it back, and then just come back whenever they want. They could just come back with the same guest badge if they don't deactivate it. And they can um, continue to, or as long as they don't deactivate the badge. Um, I'm not really sure how one would deactivate the badge. I assume there's logs, and based on the serial uh, serial number of the token, they would just uh, not accept that serial number. I'm not really sure how that would go. Um, a social engineer could also find blank cards that the company is keeping um, so that they can uh, activate them, I guess. Yes. Sorry, I thought I heard a question. Um, anyways, you can find these blank cards lying around either under the help desk or in a closet somewhere maybe. And then you can take these with you. And um, if you get a clone badge, you can just put it onto their guest badges. And this makes it look much more legit because it's something that they actually have and keep and you don't have to go through the trouble of trying to put your picture on there or doing anything quite as um, in-depth as that. You can just take it, cop something onto it, and be done with it. As far as remediation for this, um, you want to ensure that your employees are properly trained. So... Uh, to recognize social engineering attempts and then stop them. So this looks like a employee being skeptical of what people might say to them or how they present themselves and then trusting them, but making sure to contact the right people and verify that the people that are posing as whoever they are are actually meant to be there. So if you're posing as a maintenance worker, somebody, an employee can check, make sure, and talk to um, the manager of the building and make sure that these people are actually meant to be here. And if not, you can take steps to get them out. Um, it's also good to lock up the blank badges, the guest badges, into in a secure area that only limited people have access to. And then um, keep track of the guest badges and make sure that you are deactivating them at the end of the day and not just letting them remain active, especially if you take inventory, realize you don't have it at the end of the day. And those are my sources. If anybody would like to take a look at those. And that was all I had. That was awesome. Y'all enjoyed.